This is Gabby. This is Damian Chaplin. Podcast Network. Now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. I screwed up. We started running a promo when we should have run a promo. I'm Alex. This is the Ramble. Go ahead. Blame me, okay? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bowles Brown lives out in San Francisco, California, a place where I was born and raised and then went back to and loved and was very successful. And uh, one of the reasons I was successful is because Larry Bowles Brown was on my show every day <laughs> telling people what the traffic was. So yes, what, what's the traffic? It, make me feel at home, Larry. <laughs> what, what's the traffic like today? <laughs> oh, there's a woman's been rear-ended on 101, park at whore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, we couldn't do any of that stuff. Couldn't do today. that today. No, it'd be... Horrifying. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 we would get protests. Oh, how can you say that, Park at Har? Yeah, 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 you know. And uh, nobody has a sense of humor anymore. No, and it's uh, we're causing vast censorship, which I find very disturbing. Yeah, and you were saying that you even censor yourself in your act when you go out. And oh, yeah, right? yeah, you can't. There's certain things you can't say. Just. Uh, Give, Someone give, give told me, a, me if you're if you're an older comic, if you go on stage, people just assume you're a racist asshole. So you get they say you can actually feel the crowd get tense. Why don't we Why don't we kind of do a going out of business sale here, and and, <laughs> and, and use up a couple of the lines you can't use on stage anymore because you're afraid people will be upset by them. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my favorite part of sex is slamming the trunk and pushing the car in the lake. See, see, okay, good. Okay, we got that one out of the way now. That's part of your going out of business sale. Go going ahead. Out of business sale. Oh, <laughs> what was that? It's my my watch. My watch. You know what's happened? My watch is making new sounds now, like it never made before, because they just upgraded the operating system. So. I get that I get that loud ding. But anyway. So where were we? Oh yeah. So uh let's see here. Another joke maybe that you had to put to I'm rest. I'm trying to think. I, I deleted most of them. I can't they're not coming to mind right now. Yeah. Yeah. But it's usually about women and pushing them in the lakes. You know. Pushing so. them in the lakes. <laughs> Well, I, what was your uh, your old line? Well, that was about, the, what was your that, that, what, 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 that joke that, came from the uh, movie um, Psycho. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Of Remember course. He, of course. Of course. Pushed, yeah, I pushed the car in the back behind the hotel there. So. Yeah. So anyway, so so uh, hold on a second. I think I have a little little feedback happening here. Now let me take care of it. Now it's still there. I know people hear it. It's a little kind of after sound anyway uh, uh what was what was the one that i liked of yours oh yeah uh, uh what's the best part for you about having sex uh, let's see the favorite part of sex is sneaking out without pain that's that it that's what do you use that one i uh, know <laughs> doesn't use it anymore doesn't doesn't is not a good thing so no yeah yeah too bad no, but yeah. I did. Uh, I found a list of uh, obscure films, and I thought yeah. I bet Alex Bennett would know some of these. Some okay. Uh, by the way, last time we talked, or a couple of times ago that we talked, I we were talking about Max Sennett and um, uh, who's the other guy, um, uh, Hal Roach, and uh, Hal Roach. Uh, somebody wrote me, and I get wonder if I still have it here. He was complaining about the fact that I had it wrong, that uh, I had it mixed up, uh, that I thought that, let's see, Max Sennett uh, was, uh, I'm trying to remember now, which one was uh, Laurel and Hardy, Max Sennett or Hal Roach? I think it was ha Max Sennett, and Hal Roach was uh, the uh, our gang, but I don't know, I can't remember now, but I, I was wrong, it was the other way around, so... 
but now I can't even remember the way I said it. So, <laughs> you know, that's screwed it up. Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah. So, um, well, this is a list from the National Film Registry. Mm -hmm. uh, these are culturally historic or a aesthetically significant films placed on the registry. Oh, okay. And there's some very yeah. obscure ones that I'd never heard of, and I thought I bet Alex Bennett would know who these are. Okay, well let's let's see if I know the movies. 1933, Taboo, T-A-B-U. Taboo, jeez. I'm trying to remember. Oh, do do you know anything about it? Like who's in no, it? No, they don't have anything here about it. Taboo. I know the film. I know the name. But I don't remember what it was about. I think I've seen the name, but I have no idea what it's about. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. Let's let's try another. Okay. Nineteen twenty-two. Nanook of the North. Well, Nanook of the North was actually a, a documentary, uh, and it was very popular. It's about a about a family living uh, Eskimos. And it was a uh, very big. I think it was one of the. I think people called it one of the earliest documentaries. Okay. And it was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, I. Th it may have even won an Academy Award. It was a silent film, so I don't know if it won an Academy Award. Does, does it say what year there at all? Nineteen twenty-two. Oh, okay. So it didn't win an Academy Award because the Academy Awards didn't start till, I think, twenty-seven, maybe. 25? I can't remember. But anyway. 27 uh, with, with Wings. Wings, yeah. Starring Richard Arlen. Um, okay. uh, and and uh, one of my favorite actresses, Clara Bow, was in, in Wings. But anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, um, um, yeah, so Nanook was a, was, a, it was a major documentary and very popular. Very, okay. Yeah. Okay. This sounds. Uh, how about Fatty's Tin Type Tangle, 1915? Is that Arbuckle? It, it sounds like if it said Fatty, it would have to be Arbuckle. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this sounds really odd. The Life and Death of 9413, a Hollywood Extra, 1928. Well, you're 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 really making it tough on me here. <laughs> I never heard of that movie. Never heard of it. But I'm that sure if we have my fr no. <laughs> if we had my friend Shecky here, he probably has heard of it. So you know. Okay, 1980, Return of the Secaucus Seven. I think I've heard of it. Yeah, that was uh, that uh, that I that I do remember, and I'm trying to remember who did it. Uh, but uh, um, does it say who directed it? No. No. Return of the Sakaka Seven. I know the film, but I can't. Rem I can't remember any particulars about it. You could ask Alexa. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, uh, Alexa. Uh, excuse me. Echo. Who directed Return of the Sakaka Sorry, Seven? I'm not sure about that. Uh, the dish, wait a minute. Um, Echo. Echo. Who directed Return of the Sakaka Seven? Return of the Seven was directed by Burt Kennedy. No, 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 no. That was Return of the Seven. Echo. Echo. Who directed Return of the Secaucus Seven? Chronicle.com. Christopher McQuarrie, who hmm. runs both the fifth and sixth installments of the franchise, returns to direct. No, it's it's right. It's, it's doing the wrong return of the something or another. But I, <laughs> it was a th it was a kind of a political movie. Hold on a second. I'm got I, you. You've got me now, which means that I have to, I have to go to. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, IMDb, Return of the Sakaka Seven. Return of the Sakaka Seven. Okay, it was directed by John Sayles, who's a very good director, and starred a bunch of people I've never seen before. 
Seven former college friends, along with a few new friends, gather for a weekend reunion at a summer house in New Hampshire to reminisce about the good old days when they got arrested on the way to protest in Washington, D.C. Okay. Okay. Continue. This must be the oldest movie ever. Rip Van Winkle, 1896. Oh, shut up. (laughs) Jeez almighty. I don't know why I'm getting this echo back here. Hold on a second. Let me turn something down. Maybe I'm... Yeah. Oh, I got... No, I didn't get rid of it. Oh, well. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Rip Van Winkle. Oh, uh, let me see here. I, I could, like, cheat here. I can. Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle. Okay. And there's, uh, uh, no, 1978. 1914. No. 1903. Uh, that's it. That's all I came up with. So. Wow. But I, and, you know, I'm sure there were a lot of Rip Van Winkle films here that I see. So. Okay, well, this may be the greatest John Wayne movie, The Searchers. The Searchers. Oh, great film. Um, uh, John Wayne, uh, and he 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 goes out to find his niece, uh, who has been kidnapped by Indians. And he spends, I don't know, 15, 20 years searching for her and eventually finds her. And his daughter turns out, his niece turns out to be Natalie Wood. So, you know. But I, in Natalie Wood, they have somebody playing Natalie Wood as a child in the film. And do you know who played that part? Mm, no. Lana Wood, her sister. Oh, the uh, sister, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was directed. Well, I think it was in a James Bond movie. Directed, there. directed by John Ford, by the way. Let me just add that to the. And uh, this and this destroyed the note. John Wayne actually could act. Well, uh, yes. I mean, uh, and after all those years, he probably couldn't get away with not being able to act. You know, but boy, was he was he good in that picture? You know. And I've never seen it. I should check it's it out. Probably one of the greatest westerns ever made. Okay. So. But continue. Gerald McBoing Boing, 1951. Well, that's a cartoon. And it was done by UPA, which was a, a United Producers Association or something like that. And they, uh, they did these kind of like, uh, they, did, they also did Mr. Magoo as well. And okay. yeah. <laughs> See, you knew it right there, like bang. Yeah, Gerald McBoing Boing was about a kid who went boing boing, you know. <laughs> you know, one of those artsy fartsy cartoons, you know, where they went all kind of artsy. You know the, what I'm talking about in the fifties? Like M- Mr. Magoo was one of those. Yeah. You know, so. okay, okay, continue. The Hitchhiker, nineteen fifty three. Hitchhiker, yeah, I know the Hitchhiker. I'm, I'm trying to remember. 19, what, 53? 53, yeah. I know a Hitchhiker that existed. Let me just type it in here. But I know a Hitchhiker that, that was uh, done a few years ago that was a horror film. Um, that might have been with um, that kind of weird-looking actor in it. The Hitchhiker in t- two th- uh, 2007. T- what what year was this one? 53. 53? Wow, I don't even see one here for 53. The Hitchhiker, The Hitchhiker. Yeah, no, I don't even see one. But anyway, I don't know the picture. Okay. Uh, Chan is missing. One of my favorite movies. I've actually seen that one. 1982. Chan is missing in 1952. I don't Filmed know. Filmed in San Francisco. I don't know that film. Yeah, it was good. Really? Yeah, it was kind of a little mystery that uh, very low budget. That uh, I remember the name is uh, Chan is missing. Is actually 1982. Yeah. 
and it was directed by Wayne Wang, yeah, who's Bad a family, famous yeah. Chinese uh, director. Okay, all right. Continue. I'm, I'm really striking out today on these. Well, you got a few of them. Well, Republic. Well, <laughs> well, well, these are all films, in case people just tuned in. These are all films that made it for the film registry or something? Yes. How about the Republic Steel Strike Riot newsreel footage from 1937? Uh, ne <laughs> next. Oh, yeah, I remember that. It was a newsreel. I remember that. Uh, yeah, black and white. I think it was in black and white. And... Uh, Greed, 1924. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Greed is maybe, in many respects, the greatest film ever made. Okay. It was done uh, by uh, Eric von Stroheim. And the story behind it is that he got, in, he was working for Universal, and he just spent, overspent on films, and he was just, his, his budgets just went, you know, crazy. And the head of the studio at the time, who was Irving Thalberg at Universal, uh, got rid of him, fired him, threw him off the movie he was on, got another person to finish directing it. So uh, von Stroheim goes to MGM, and he gets a deal, and he starts to work on Greed, which was a from a book. Uh, and... Um, while he was doing it, guess who takes over running production at MGM? Irving Thalberg. Okay, and now here, here's, here's our dear friend Eric von Stroheim going crazy, spending too much money on a movie. He, supposedly they said that he literally took it from a book and filmed every single word except the periods. You know, I mean, he just, <laughs> and the film came, it finished the film, and he showed it to a few friends who saw the complete version, and it was, I think, almost nine hours long. And uh, uh, um, they, they, he then turns in this nine-hour film to MGM, and they said, you got to cut this down. Okay, and he cut <laughs> nine I, hour, I, I would think. <laughs> I think he cut it down to six hours. All right, and then at that point, Thalberg said, "You're fired," and he went in and cut it down to two and a half hours. Now the film that remains is still one of the greatest films ever made, but supposedly so it's watchable. According to anybody who saw the nine-hour version, it's a silent film, by the way. The nine-hour version. Uh, said it was incredible. It was the most incredible film they had ever seen. It was just... Really? Yes. It was just off the charts wonderful. All right? So um, uh, that was the history of, of Greed, uh, a film which I still love to watch. And as a matter of fact, one of the nicest things anybody ever did to me, I, got, uh, I was doing a thing online with Penn and Teller and a couple of their friends. And I started communicating with Teller about the film Greed. And the next thing I know, in the mail comes a book. And it's the complete screenplay, the original screenplay of Greed. Wow. It was published in like, they finally published it, I think, in 1952 or something like that. And th that was very nice of Teller. I don't know where the book is right now, maybe in storage. But um, uh, that film well, I want to see it now. Well, you, you can. Uh, you go online. I think a lot of times you'll find that the Turner Classic Movies is showing it. You can find the film. And, in fact, Turner Classic Movies a few years ago kind of restored it. Uh, but they, they had to take the scenes that didn't exist anymore and run the intertitles and stills from what they saw was that part of the film, and they somehow elongated it, but they still didn't get it back to the whole, you know, eight, nine hours, however uh, lengthy the original one was. But I got to tell you, wonderful film, one of my favorite films of all time. So there, see, you didn't get me on greed. Well, I'm glad you got <laughs> that. was interesting. <laughs> Yeah. Nin 1916, Intolerance. 
Intolerance, uh, D.W. Griffith. This is the oh, one. Okay, I thought that was Griffith. Okay. Yeah, you I all, you always, you always see um, uh, scenes of intolerance in documentaries about old movies and so on. It's the one where you have uh, Babylon. I think it's Babylon and all these big giant elephants. I mean, it was one of the largest. It was probably the largest set ever built up to that time for silent films. So, okay. Next? I'd love to see. I would love to see movies that are made like that. That was. Uh, oh, it, it's a spectacular film, but I, I'm, it's not one of my favorites. It just looks great, you know. Uh, I, I, what happened was the reason he created the film was he took a lot of heat for, uh, you know, Birth of a Nation, which was his first big hit, and he didn't uh, he didn't do that well uh, with. Uh, uh, the audience on that because it was about the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan were the heroes of Birth of a Nation. And so he was considered a racist. So he decided to make this movie called Intolerance, and it's all about intolerance. Okay? And that was okay. his way of doing a make good, you know, before the Me Too movement. Anyway, you have another? Okay, how about uh, 1932 Freaks? Freaks is uh, Todd Browning. Uh, he used actual real circus freaks in the film. Uh, and, uh, yeah, he used actual circus freaks. And it's, uh, it's a rather scary film. It's a horror film. Because Todd Browning did the original Dracula, or the, the original sound Dracula. There were other Draculas before that. Uh, and Todd Browning... Um, uh, this film was just so off-putting. I mean, people, it freaks, people with no arms, no legs, uh, pinheads, uh, uh, midgets, uh, tall people. Uh, uh, he had a Siamese uh, twins in this picture. And it was so off-putting that it was banned in America for something like 40 years. The only place you could see it was in Europe. Uh, but that's Todd Browning's Freaks. Very, very, very uncomfortable film. <laughs> that sounds like it. <laughs> okay, let's see here. We still got time for at least one or two more. Got a couple more. Uh, okay, I've never, I've heard of this movie, Mildred Pierce. Mildred Pierce, Joan Crawford. That's it. That's all I have to say. You know. Who always to me? She always looked a little scary. Was that Joan Crawford? Yeah, I think it was Joan Crawford and Mildred Pierce. I mean, you know who I mix Joan Crawford up with occasionally is Barbara Stanwyck. You know, let me just make sure I'm right. But Mildred Pierce was, uh, yeah, I'm sure it was Joan Crawford. Mildred Pierce. No, they have a Kate Winslet version here. Joan Crawford. Yeah, I was right. Joan Crawford. Yeah. So, and, uh, oh, let's try one more. Okay, uh, this will never get this. This is 1921, Manhattan. I do know that film. I have that film. Really? Yes. Uh, I I can't tell you what it's about. It has an opening that's very strange. It has an opening credits in which you have this giant monster walking down Broadway, smashing cars and everything in his wake. And that's the, the credit sequence. Uh, and I can't remember what the rest of the film was about, but I think that was the Manhattan you're mentioning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Try one more. One more. We got time. One more. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the Great Train Robbery, 1903. Oh, come on. The Great Train Robbery was the first uh, film that came out that actually had a narrative. You know, it's that was the first one. It's 17 minutes long or something like that, and it's... Uh, it's a silent film, and it's uh, it's you know it's it it's as good as it can be for being the f you know one of the first narrative films ever made, you know. So I mean, it was it as a film, it sucks. As a, as history, it's very important. Edward Edward Edwin H. Porter, I think, directed it. I may be Did wrong. You? Yeah. <laughs> Only you and Mort Saul would know this stuff. Wait a minute. Great train robbery. Hold on a second. Train. 
robbery. Let me just put that in here. Let me see. Here we go. 1903. It, uh, it featured Bronco Billy Anderson, and it was directed by Edwin S. Porter. Thank you. There you go. Okay, I said H, but it was S. Edwin. You're yeah. a genius. Yeah, you know I am. Anyway. <laughs> Hey, it's great talking to you again, Larry. As always, always great and you, talking to you, 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 buddy. I love the tests you give me. They're they're always fun. I like it because you know all this shit. It's amazing. I like it because for the most part, I do too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, talk to you next week, Larry. You got it, Larry Bowles Brown, folks. <laughs> this is Gabnet. The Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. And that's Larry. And we'll have Larry on here again next week if uh, if we're here next week. I I have no idea. Every day I say to myself, what What are we doing this for? You know, what happens is is I I look at the uh, results of how many people are watching the program. They're getting less and less and less. But then after I go back a few days later, people in in hindsight were watching a show I didn't think were watching it. So I don't know. Uh, I'll wait and see. I don't know. Maybe I can have I can have Jack do every day except Friday, and then I'll do Friday. See, and then then uh, Josh Wheeler will be happy, and a lot of other people will be very happy uh, because they like to do it on Friday. Uh, right and uh, speaking of which let's go to our zoom panel there they are there's uh, there's Josh and there's Jeff okay that's our show for tonight so see you guys later you know uh, anyway Hel- yes what were you saying uh, what were you, I, I didn't have your mic open there uh, Jeff oh I said see you next week yeah see me next week <laughs> right <laughs> Hello, Josh. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm I'm okay. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I think what I need to do is I need to go out more. I think I'm just bored, and I think that's why I'm all Possible. lightheaded and tired around the house and so on. But then I go out and there's no place to go. You know. I mean, yeah. I know what you're saying. Oh, you live in New York City. There are places to go. I suppose if I were, like. 21 and I could go to some stupid concert or something, you know, but I don't care about that anymore. You, do you go to concerts anymore, Josh? Me? No. I really don't, uh, never did enjoy I never enjoyed. Uh, I never enjoyed concerts either. You know? No, I really never have. Uh, I've always found, uh, just like what I've heard of them live, since I've really only been to maybe like two in my life, that... Mm-hmm. Uh, most people do not sing anything like they do on their albums at all. No, well, because they did them in some the studio. Them. You know the worst right, act. Right. You know, the but, I mean, wor- some of them just downright bad. You know? You, you know, the worst act was I've ever seen that could not reproduce what they did on uh, on, bra- in, on record live. It's Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Hmm. They Ooh. were terrible. They were out of tune. Well, uh, that's yeah. what I'm saying is yeah. uh, a lot of them, a lot of them do that stuff, and uh, you know, I think the only concert I really remember even going to was uh, a few years ago before Glenn Fry died. My wife and I went to see the Eagles, and uh, they did a really nice job. Um, but uh, you know, other than that, I Sirius, you know, plays a lot of live tracks from people in concerts and you can find them YouTube and those kinds of things. A lot of people are just not, I mean, they put on a show, you know, like a performance, but the singing is just not. Yeah. And the question is how, 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 how much does it cost to go to a concert these days? Well, I imagine they're pretty expensive. (laughs) Yeah. They they just had an Elton John was just at Levi stadium and a lot of my friends went and I mean, it is a good show. And I, I think his, his singing really didn't have the that that you know those long you know long words or you know however you say that. So it wasn't like he was straining his voice. But I've heard like Rush and some other groups that have you know these songs that they really had their voice out there and now they really abbreviate the songs and 
it sounds a lot different. You know, it, now that you mention it, you know what the best concert was I ever went to? Elton? It was Yes. It was in Barcelona, Spain at the uh -huh. Olympics. He did a concert. <laughs> and uh, I... I thought, you know, I'm, at the beginning with, I interviewed him. I was the first person to interview him in the United States when he first started hitting it. And I did an interview with him. And before we, we, he went on stage in Barcelona because we were there courtesy of Coca-Cola, they took us backstage to meet him. And I said to him, you know something, you were the first person, I was the first person who interviewed you when you came to the United States. And you know what his reaction was? Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, uh, that concert, I just remember it. Then I thought, you know, okay, Elton John, he's good, you know, but what's it going to be like? All of a sudden, he started playing one song, and then another song, and another song, and you knew every one of them. Every one of them were hits. And the energy in the stadium, it was one of these mini stadiums, they call them, mini soccer stadiums. And I'm telling you, it was the best concert I've ever been to. It was just, I mean, I was exhausted. I, I don't normally get up and start dancing and everything, but man, you couldn't help but do it. Yeah, my friends showed a bunch of videos in, and the, it was like song after song after song. And like, you forget all the songs that he did that were that were popular. Like you said, that you remember all the words to. It's yeah, crazy. yeah. You know, uh, I mean, and 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 you think you know everything he did, and then all of a sudden he'll do another one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? A, a phenomenal talent. You know, and he's he's retiring now. After he says after his next tour, which goes on for like ten years, but yeah, uh, but a lot of your uh, a lot of the big acts, you know, now like you know the younger ones or whatever. Uh, you know, like a Taylor Swift or, you know, the people who are really big now, I, I think it's really expensive. My wife, Taylor Swift was here in Columbus maybe like, I don't know, two, three years ago or something, like mm -hmm. right before COVID. And I remember my wife saying something about like the cheapest ticket was like $450 or something. I mean, yeah. and that, well, that was the face value. That wasn't on like a resale uh, site or anything. I mean, it was amazingly expensive. I mean, and to have her spend the rest of the, most of the show dissing boyfriends? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, so I mean, you know, just whatever your taste is, whoever you like, I mean, I I've never been into her and I wouldn't know a know. single one of her songs if you, if you played it for me. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I hear from just, people who I respect who say she's very good. You yeah. Know? I mean, I think her, uh, her body of, <laughs> work you know or whatever is is good but it's just uh i just i mean i can't imagine like two people like my wife and i paying you know nine hundred dollars <laughs> to a yeah. concert for uh, a night. <laughs> hey we we have a we have a, a cameo like, yeah I see that. look yeah lock him out yeah. lock him That's out probably not good. lock him out <laughs> her, her birthday hey happy birthday adrian mm. Okay, bye. <laughs> Boy, she was impressed by. I, 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 I want cake. I want cake. I want cake. Okay, okay, bye. Bye. This is grown up talk. This is wait, this is her birthday. How much yeah, sugar? Do, how much sugar does she have in her right now? Oh, she says she's twenty one. Uh, no, just some cake. But, yeah, but there's, there's the Korean group uh, Blackpink, and they're they're on tour right now in the U.S. and they're only going to L.A. They're not coming up here. So mm -hmm. Tiffany, it's next month. Tiffany's taking Adrian and Stephanie, and they're four hundred fifty dollars a seat, and they're like in the nosebleeds. Hmm. What? Yeah, it's really what? Expensive. Yeah, Blackpink. Yeah, is very they're very popular right now. Yeah. They well, you know, I mean, it, all things Korean are very popular now. Movies and music yeah. and yeah. soap operas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the dramas. Yeah. Yeah, well, but it, so she's she's. I think they're gonna drive down. Then we're gonna fly down. So you have flight. Then you have hotel stay because they're gonna stay a couple of days because they want to go Friday so they're not all burnt out by going down Saturday. Well, you should see what's <laughs> going on in back of you. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, and uh, what's his name knows about Blackpink? Hmm. Bree knows about Blackpink. Hello, Bree. We haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing, Bree? <laughs> Hi. Where in the world are you? 
Can you hear us? Well, uh, let me. I'm trying to hook up my uh, my head my headsets right now. I am somewhere in Malaysia. Somewhere in Malaysia. Okay, That's turn right. on your camera now too. Yeah. Okay, just give me one second. I'm. Uh, yeah, I know. Having some. So speaking about the Korean, the the there's one called the BTS, and they're like I don't know, maybe seven. I've heard of them. Oh, actually, my seatmates are from Korea. Yeah, and, and they're they have to enlist in the army. So, I think they're going to be broken up for a while so they can serve <laughs> their army their army time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, brief. Oh, there he is. Okay. Sorry, now, I had to hook up my headset. Turn your camera sideways. Let's see if we can get you wide. There we go. That's much better. I always like it that way. Most people, most people <laughs> haven't learned that you really should turn your camera sideways because then you get the the wide, you know, the panoramic view as opposed to what we call the portrait view, which makes it look like you're looking through a slit, slit in a in a fence or something. But anyway, so you're in somewhere in Malaysia. Yes, I, I'm on a bus down to Singapore today. Mm. Bray, if you angled your camera just right, it would look like you're in a private jet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It almost looked like you're in a private jet. Yeah, but so. it is all the foliage right outside, yeah. and the, the jet is about ready to crash. That looks like yeah. an airplane right there, but yeah, just still show the yeah. window outside. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They must have very good Wi-Fi in that bus. Uh, I'm not using Wi-Fi. I'm using 4G. Oh, you're using 4G. So you're going yeah. literally through the uh, through the phone system. Yeah. And so and so you're in Malaysia. There's a tower right there. Wow. Because that's that's pretty good. That's, you know, that's good reception. That's a tower right there. I mm -hmm. think that's probably one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh uh, well. Anyway, how you been, Bree? Uh, uh, pretty good. Can't complain. Yeah, um, you know, you still got a job and everything like that, right? Still got a job, although the uh, the currency here is now considerably. Uh, I mean, I've lost in U.S. dollars. I've lost about twenty percent of my monthly income. Wow, yeah, yeah. Well, welcome to the real world. <laughs> you know, I mean, you're even affected by the dollar, right? Yeah. Yeah, because they're, they, do you exchange your money for dollars or what? No, um, not usually. Uh, I have a card where I have an app and I can I, I carry four or five currencies at one time. Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines mm -hmm. uh, are typical. And I have them on one card um, <laughs> and U.S. dollars. Yeah. Yeah, but how's the dollar, how's, how's the Malaysian coinage i don't know what it, it's not doing yeah well. they call it they call it the ringgit and it used to be four for a dollar and now it's five it's almost five. Oh boy oh boy so <laughs> yeah so that's well, how i lost a lot hey I'm well, thinking you know i was i was gonna go into to uh you know hr and say hey um <laughs> you know could you guys give me a 20 percent raise <laughs> but I, you know never mind Fine. yeah but they don't. They, they, they what would they tell you to go blow it out your ass, right? <laughs> Probably. Or yeah. whatever your ass is so, in Malaysia. Yeah. Um, no, so, it's fine. I mean, just the inflation has been hitting. Everything is up. I mean, everything. Yeah. Uh, I went into Burger King the other day, and the uh, you know the, the thing I usually get was up seventy or eighty cents, you know, just from the day before, and I was like ready to pay. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> yeah, wow. And usually that's just cheap food, period, you know? Yeah. 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 So, well, anyway, good to see you again. Uh, join, yeah. join, nice yeah, join in any moment you want to here. You notice some of the people okay. here. You notice Josh is here and Brian yeah. is here. And I don't know if are, you know are what. Are headsets okay? What? Or is there too much background noise? Or anything, background. Or what? There is? Okay. okay. Bree, you got you got the mask. So what what's uh, what's it going on over there right now? Yeah, technically I should be wearing it. Are are they requiring it in certain areas? Uh, um, it's hard to say. Ooh. Yes, yeah, yeah. Pretty much in inside they they request 
and the question of please wear the mask. How bad did how did, how bad did COVID hit Malaysia? Uh, you know, it, it definitely hit here. I, I don't think that it was ever Italian or U.S. levels mm -hmm. or China levels, but you know, it was here. It was here, obviously. Mm -hmm. And, and um, did you get a vaccination? Yes, yeah. I'm double vaccinated. Uh, my friend is getting his third booster today, the Moderna, you know, the new one that covers the new variants in yeah. Singapore. And um, so he's going to tell me how it went. I might get it tomorrow or the next day. Bivalent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've had I've quadruple That's vaccinations now. Had quadruple vaccinations now. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've had, you know, the f original two, then another two. Oh, and then a third one, a, a third uh, booster. Um, so I, I've had a total of five, you know. And if they want me to go down tomorrow and get another one, I will. You know, who, who, need, who needs the grief, right? You know. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, uh, hello, Charlene. How are you out in New Jersey? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a little cold. Well, it's mm -hmm. cold it's here. Chilly. It's cold here, too. I'm comfortable. Well, we don't want to hear how you're doing with money. We really don't. Uh, Wasn't talking about money. Yeah. Uh, it was like 90, 90 degrees today. 80, yeah. 80, 80, 80, 80. Was it really? It's strange. Yeah, it was a second, a second summer, they call it. Yeah. It's getting really strange. Strange. Yeah. So are you still, uh, Bree, are you still living in that same place you were living before? Uh, now you're sideways. No, no. There you go. Okay. no? Uh, okay. I I moved to a high rise. Oh, okay. So you no longer have yeah, problems. It's much better. You no longer have problems much with better. that wild animal that you were dealing with. The civet cats. The civet cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, I uh, I don't have the civet cats anymore. Thank goodness. You know, and it's, my neighbors. Mm -hmm. I don't really have to deal with neighbors. It's funny. He's driving down the road and you see that car there. He could be in Florida. You know, there's mm -hmm. nothing there that says to me Malaysia. Right. You turn it on cruise control when you go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, it what does kind of look like Florida, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, we don't talk about we haven't talked about politics much lately, main, mainly because I just, you know, it's getting so boring, you know. Not now. Huh? So not now. What do you mean? Well, they, today they subpoenaed Donald Trump to speak before the January 6th committee. Let's see how he worms out of this one. Yeah. Or squirm. He's an expert worm. Like, hmm? like he, told, he told everybody else not to go, right? So see if he doesn't go. Yeah, well, he that was bad advice that he gave to uh, Steve Bannon. Yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, Bannon, uh, Bannon won't be going to jail anytime soon. I, I see. Okay, now the plants are starting to look like Malaysian. Okay? Mm -hmm. You know. But that car doesn't look Malaysian at all. Yeah. The Honda. I mean, I don't know what a Malaysian car would look like. Do they have a Malaysian brand of automobile, uh, Bree? They do. Huh? They do. The, the, yeah, the very common one is called Myvi, uh, and it's made by uh, Peridu Proton or Paraduo. Oh, really? Okay. Never heard yeah. of them, but... And there we have some motorcycles. You'll see a MyV. Every other car will be a MyV here. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I pass those here. Oh, yeah. And in San Francisco now, we have, uh, we have Ray Renati. Or not San Francisco, actually, but <laughs> down south of San Francisco. Hello, Ray. <laughs> oh, his mic isn't on. He's hooking up. He's hooking up. Yeah. We've got a lot of traffic uh, today because, of course, it's a holiday. What holiday? holiday what holiday is it? This one is called uh, Deepavali or Diwali. Oh, it's Diwali. Actually, Diwali. India. Yeah. yeah. I've heard of that. What is it exactly? Festival of Lights. Oh, really? It's like a big right. deal, yeah. Is that in most Asian countries? Uh, India. Um, yeah, certainly Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Singapore. Oh, okay. Thank you. Dish. Yeah. Oh. And what does everybody do on that holiday? They eat a lot. <laughs> well, that, that's every other holiday. Yeah. Come on. 
Oh, the there you are. Dress in bright colors. Is that <laughs> and they do the the henna tattoo at my work? We have a thing yeah, on. You gotta get it. Yeah, we have a thing on on uh, on Monday. Oh, actually, it's on Monday at work, and they'll do the hen. The people come in and do all the henna tattoos on the you know. Mendy. Uh, That's called Mendy. Ah, uh, Mendy. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, uh, Alex, yeah. <laughs> sure, are I we getting? I think Monday is a Diwali in New Jersey. I think it is, like like Martin Luther King Day or President's Day or whatever. We're getting Diwali Day here. Are you getting Diwali Day in in uh, in New Jersey? I heard Jersey? it on the news today. I think. Well, how politically correct is that? But New Jersey, so, isn't it Diwali Day? It's Diwali. 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 I got I you at the Wally right here. <laughs> <laughs> I got some oh, Diwali for you. Yeah. You guys, I saw um, Chris Christie, you know, our fat fuck. <laughs> you know and, something? Uh, I saw him on um, on uh, Bill Maher's show. Bill Mars. And he mm -hmm. actually was very funny. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know that I wouldn't mind going out to dinner with him. I wouldn't have to, p I wouldn't want to pick up the bill, <laughs> you know. He he's the only person I've ever plate. seen. Well, he lost some weight, but he's still pretty heavy. Well, it's like the old joke. Yeah, he, he lost 100 pounds. How does he look? Fat. <laughs> you, know, so. it, uh, uh, what, uh, you know, I mean, I was just amazed when I watched him on Bill Maher how, how much fun he was. He, he had a, a good sense of humor. I like well, the guy. You know, Huh? Well, you people would. <laughs> what would you say? What would you say, Ray? You like him? Sorry. I like him. Actually, I have to say that in that context, I don't like him as a politician. No. Okay, he's a skeezy little motherfucker. Okay, but right. but uh, I, I, I wouldn't mind going out to dinner with him. You know, because he, we'd have a good dinner conversation. You know, and even though I'd have the opinion opposite him, he wouldn't berate me for it. You know. He'd kiss your ass. <laughs> no, he wouldn't kiss my ass. He would. Well, just... I thought he was kissing Bill Maher's No, ass. he wasn't. He was telling Bill Maher, basically, this is what I I'm am. Sorry. This is I'm sorry. I'm not arguing with you, but he's my governor, you know, because like, I live in New He's Jersey. not your governor. <laughs> well, he'll always be my governor because he was the governor of New Jersey. Whatever. I'm not. Forget it. I'm he's sorry. your former governor. Well, he's the fat fuck to me. Okay. And a lot of people I know. <laughs> Well, you know, he's, he has a weight I mean, problem. I know he's a good Republican. Uh, what are you? Are you a fat shamer? Is that what you are? No, I'm just not a Republican, and I don't know how anyone could be one, because I'll never be one for the rest of my life. I'm thinking and, of becoming a Republican. I, I, I truthfully am. Why? I'm, why? Because they got to have somebody in their party who's got a sense of balance right. and decency and so on. And if all, all of us avoid being Dem a Republican... What? They wouldn't let you in on that basis. Well, they can't keep me out. That's what I like about America. If I want to be a Republican, I can be a Republican. Yeah, but look what they do to the Republicans who try to think for themselves. I mean, they, they, they <clears throat> kick them out. Well, then I wouldn't have to worry about being a member for too long, <laughs> would I? <laughs> yeah, Charlene. What I think, Alex, is like, if they could get this shit element, I'm sorry, I'm I'm just like that, you know, bluntly speaking and whatever. And I'm, uh, but I have no filter. I don't know. But, but, you know, unless they change the Republican Party, because it went from being like the religious right and all that stuff to now there's, you know, we all know this. I didn't want to repeat. I remember, the, look, I remember the, the Ku Klux Klan yeah. is in it and all this stuff. And it's disgusting, you know. Well, they've got, we, they got to work on that party. Can I say something? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I remember a time when, you know, I, the Republican Party just represented, my father always, I always asked him, what's the difference between Democrats and the Republicans? And he, uh, and he said, well, the Democrats are the party of labor and uh, are for the working man. And uh, the, uh, the Republicans are for, the, for big business and for uh, people who have a lot of money and so on and so forth. And that was pretty much what they were, you know. Uh, 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 and and believe it or not, I mean, you had some real assholes who were Democrats in those days. I mean, people, do you remember the Dixiecrats? Yeah. You know, they, they were terrible. <laughs> so to say that, you know, the, I mean, the Rep Dem <clears throat> Republican Party has lost its way. There's no question about it. Yes, Charlie. Well, you know, 
what I'm sick of is I talk to people, you know, and I get I can get people to talk to me about being a Republican. And my hairdresser that did my hair, I love her, but she's a Trumper. It's like Phil, you know, like she feels that like they feel that they will be rich if they're with uh, the Republicans. And I thought one time I voted for Ronald Reagan <clears throat> because I was a yuppie. Remember the yuppies? And I, he had helped me with unemployment. And I thought he had done something for me. So I voted for him. Well, that's the reason why people that. vote for people, though, is because people do, is, do something for them. Uh, the yeah, fact is that a lot it. of people, a lot of people felt, I think, with Trump, that if they voted to him for him, they'd be rich by mm -hmm. osmosis. Yes. You know, and am I right, Josh? You laughed at that, but it's true. Am I right? They they had this well, idea. People, yeah. people do have these misguided ideas. That, well, uh, the most misguided the most misguided the, idea is that he's a billionaire. That uh, yeah, well, right, but yeah, I mean, people mm -hmm. have this idea that the president will have some sort of direct effect on their own personal wealth and it it's just not really true well you know i was thinking about it the other day and everybody's saying well you know look at the look at the uh, look at the economy right now i mean that's all biden's fault and i'm thinking what the hell could he do about it yeah i mean I, you know i see the you know the price inflation you know obviously but i'm just saying separate from that mm -hmm. i still don't understand what's wrong with the economy i mean everyone that wants a job can have a job and everywhere that i talk to or deal with in my own personal company is being pushed to do nothing every single day except to make as much product as you can possibly make because we can sell all of it Mm -hmm. Make it as much as you can, as fast as you can. And everyone that I talk to says the same exact thing. So, and if you want a job, you can get a job. Yeah. I mean, so how's that a bad economy? Outside of the price of goods. I get that. And I mean, the price you know, of goods is really, you know, you I, know. I, 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 is really a problem with uh, the price of goods is really a problem with people um, jacking up prices and taking advantage of the situation and making the Some excuse. Cases, yeah, I've always thought that a lot of part of the markets was you know, manipulated by... I mean, the one thing I will blame groups. on Biden is that he's president, so do something about it. You know, you're not responsible for it. You didn't make it happen. But yeah. do something about it. It'll come and down. I wouldn't say that they come down. I wouldn't say that they've ignored it or done nothing, right? Wouldn't you say they a lot of these people who are raising the prices on food, for instance, are really profiteering? It's not a realistic raise in price. Yeah, yeah. And they have done some things, you know. I mean, they've taken some steps to lower the price of fuels, for example. For fuel, but that, other, see, that he can do you know, in various and sundry ways. Mm -hmm, the know. economy itself, what the cost of goods is, yeah. there's not a lot he can do about, you know? I would agree. I mean, you know, and mm -hmm. even the things that they can do, it's not as if you could say today Biden signed in the law that Congress passed the Inflationary Reduction Act and the next day you go to the store and the bread is 42 cents cheaper. It's that's going to be a long time, you know, I mean, so, you know, it's it's not as if, OK, Congress passed that law. All the goods and services will now be well, cheaper. Well, you know, it's in, it, it, it's interesting that you have Bree here in Malaysia who's having the same exact problem. You know, the cost of a burger at McDonald's was 42 cents more today than it was yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Alan. It's, it's not, this is like the fifth time in history that the whole world is in recession, not just us. So that that's why Bree has got problems and China's got problems and England's got mm -hmm. problems. It's, it's everybody's got problems right now. Jack? So everybody, the Republicans all want to blame Trump, mm -hmm. uh, Biden, and Biden can't, doesn't control the world. Jack? Hey there, this is one of the more interesting conversations I've heard all day. Uh, Dwight Eisenhower, as he went into the uh, second term of his presidency, said sometimes the president is just there. Uh, Harry Truman said, you go to Washington, 
you become president mm -hmm. and you think you're going to be able to do something and yet there are already 400 other sons of bitches up here thinking they're going to do something <clears throat> and uh, uh i think the thing we have to remember when we went to this idea of a global economy it screwed everybody look what happened in britain just yesterday a guy who had been prime minister for two weeks a guy resigned a, yeah a guy it was a woman it was a woman and it was six weeks I, i'm sorry i'm sorry a guy i, I did i say a guy yeah, I mean, a girl who had been president a girl yeah how about yeah, a woman yeah. Take me out and slap me and throw me over. Her. <laughs> no, uh, what I'm saying is six weeks. She was in there for six weeks. Yeah, but I, I said two weeks, you know. And you said guy. Yeah, okay, I screwed up. That, that'll be the... That, hey, he's the our new I, Phil. That's and the no only shit, time I ever screwed up. But look, what I'm saying is somebody who was in office for six weeks is out of office. You know, uh it's hard for all of these politicians to do something in their countries now because we trade on an international level. Somebody coughs in, in Europe, we hand them a handkerchief and blow the nose in New York. <laughs> hmm. Yes, Charlene. Well, Josh, you know, had said something, and he said that people just think that you know, like uh, you're going to go into the store and magically see, you know, after this inflation thing that, you know, Biden was doing. The big things are the gas price and the, and the inflation in New Jersey here. And everyone's bitching and bitching and bitching. And, you know, I'll talk to my friend who happens to be like a Trumper, but I still love her, you know, like Phil. All right, all right, all right, all right. But, you know you love your But Trump. anyway, like they get mad because they think it's going to happen immediately. They're going to walk in. What Josh said. They think they're going to walk in, and amazingly, the prices are dropped down on everything. That's no, all I no, want to say. There's no, there's no magic bullet here to take care well, of this they think problem. There is, these people. You know, but I mean, uh, on the other hand, I think to sit around and blame Biden or any political party for it is ridiculous. I mean, uh, I think the seeds of this economy right now were, and I hate to do this, but they were sown under Trump. And, you know, now we're trying to bail ourselves out of it. So what the hell? Yeah. Am I right, Josh? Is that, am I, have I got it right or have I got it wrong? No, I mean, that's basically it. I mean, you know, outside of some massive event or whatever, I mean, you know, the economy doesn't change that well, quickly. And, and I'll tell you, you I'll know, tell you, policies take effect. It takes a while. I'll tell you, you something know? they should also blame this economy on and that was COVID. it changed the whole way we do business yeah right you know yeah i mean the supply chain disruption has still never fully recovered because even though uh, materials are available now and things like that they have not been able to match that with a labor force yet i mean you know when when the materials came back online uh for the most part they they have never been able to match the labor force to that and then so it moves around all over i mean if 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 a company can finally get their labor force together uh someone downstream from them has it you know like the trucking industry for example even if some of the manufacturing industries are starting to get their act together the trucking industry can't and then by the time the trucking industry does uh, the shipping industry for overseas containers may be back in the crapper. I mean, it, it just, you know, it's not a sustainable in a global deal. I mean, long term, there may be some positives from this where some of this manufacturing is brought back to the United States, you know. I mean, I'll tell Joe you, Biden I'll, was, I'll tell you one, one thing we got to do, and we, we got to do it now, is start producing <laughs> chips over here. Well, you know, that's what I'm saying. Is, is we, we is invented Joe, them to begin with, so why can't we produce them? You know, well, we're going to. I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. Is President Biden was here what a month ago, and he talked about it in the State of the Union address, and he came here where I live to visit the new Intel facility that is going to build chips here in Columbus, and you know they're building it right now. I mean. I, someone from my workplace left to go work there in management i mean so 
you know, it's a massive mm -hmm. campus. So, the, you know, Google is coming here mm -hmm. too as well to do so, some stuff. So, I mean, me, that me, stuff is going to come back and that's let, let probably me, a positive, let, let me ask, but it's not going to be yeah. felt tomorrow. Let me ask Bree this. Bree, uh, Taiwan is in your general neighborhood, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what are the feelings about China and Taiwan and China trying to take over Taiwan and invade Taiwan? Well, I have a niece. I have a niece who lives in Taiwan. But I have to tell you, you know, for the average person, well, here in Malaysia, you'd never hear of them. And even with my niece, they don't really talk about it on a daily basis. Yeah. So yeah, it's just not something that. So they do, they just go on with their lives right now, and if that happens, that happens, right? Oops, he froze up. Mm. Must be so much for the good Wi-Fi. So much for the no, that's not <laughs> Wi-Fi. It's uh, he's using his he's using his phone service. The four G. The four G. Oh, you get five G. <laughs> But, and Josh is right with all the manufacturing stuff. I mean, yeah. so, you know, so, so, you, you figure supply chain and everything has grown, you know, and mm -hmm. there have been little spikes here and there. But then if you stop that, you know, for six months, for a year, two years, and then try to just snap your fingers and have all the supply chain, every part of that supply chain, you know, it, it's, well, it's how, very, very hard. How has the supply mm -hmm. chain affected your company? Because you you create goods and services and technology and so on, yeah. And, and w one thing we've been really good at the last ten years is is obtaining companies, so we don't have to so we don't have to rely on people making the parts, but it's still the raw material, all, all the plastic that we get to make our plastic mold injected parts, and then all the chemicals. So it's it, it affected really bad. So I mean, uh, you know and, those. PPE, and e we're out of masks. We're actually reusing masks at the beginning, like February, just before it would really hit, is when we started seeing all, all that supply chain stuff happen. Because yeah. the world, the global, started using all those masks, you know, and then mm -hmm. we started getting short, and then that was February. Mm -hmm. Then by March, when everything was hitting, that, you know, it, mm -hmm. it was very difficult. Uh, I, um, um, Bree, what, what do you think? Yeah. You, you're trying to there say something? There was, a, there was a pack of monkeys there. <laughs> now, I don't think you see that. I don't think you see that in Florida. But yeah, yeah I, the signal might be in and out. Because I'm not in yeah. between uh, KL and Singapore. It's yeah. kind of booties here. Where are you, Bree? He's in Malaysia. Well, oh. Yeah. In a train? In no, a on train. a bus. Oh, a bus. Yes. I'm in between chaos and yeah, sh show out the window there, Bree, and let's just see. Okay. Hmm? Just shoot we'll out just the window a little that. bit. Okay. All right. Hold on. He's, there we go. See? Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, there you are. He's in Malaysia. Looks like California. I know. You I was saying that. It, farms. Well, there we go. There's a big truck. Wow, they have trucks there, too. Wow, wow that's very California looking. Hey, I, I got news for you. Malaysia actually even has coffee and things like that. Uh, Look at that. They got a monkey riding a okay. motorcycle. There, there you know it's Malaysia when you see a moped on the freeway. <laughs> the monkey riding it. If you ever come here to Dallas, you see a lot of monkeys on mopeds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where, where, were the, where were the monkeys? In the trees, uh, Bree? No, oh, it's on they, the motorcycle. Huh? Down here, like right along the road. Yeah, well, mm. we're, we're not going to see them, obviously. They were running up to the trees. Yeah. yeah. What kind of monkeys were they? I don't know what kind they were. I gotta, I gotta look that up, I guess. <laughs> I know it's not a. Is it a capuchin monkey or something or? Costa Rica had so many monkeys, it was crazy. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when you go to Asia, you go to the monkey islands, they don't mess around. They say, don't wear a hat, don't yeah. have your purse, don't have anything on you that can be taken. And right. If they do, that monkey is gone. And so we went in Vietnam somewhere to Monkey Island, and we got out of the car, and her dad had a baseball hat, and that thing was gone. Like, what? Wait a minute. Wait I, a minute. I fell asleep next to a tree. 
and the monkeys stole my lunch, and they were doing it in cahoots with the raccoons. They were like, <laughs> I'm not shooting you. And then you have to wait. They, they there, have there's got to be a you, joke here somewhere. I'm no, trying no, no, to think. No, 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 no. And they have a racket there because then the people who live there, they sell ice cream. And then to get your thing back, you have to buy an ice cream and you give that to the monkey and the monkey will give you the hat back. Really? <laughs> yes. Wait a minute. Hold on a Costa second. Costa Rica is the same. <laughs> Sounds like monkey organized crime. Yes, it, it is. is. It's it so is. funny. So you give the monkey ice cream and the monkey says, here's your hat? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. These are some really smart monkeys. <laughs> yes. Oh man, they're so smart. They're smart as hell. Really? Oh, That's yeah. amazing. I'm, yeah. Yes, yeah, Charlene. smart enough not to vote for Republicans. <laughs> Charlene, <laughs> yes. Okay, I just was wondering if someone's gonna talk over me. It's a stupid joke. I hope joke. so. I'll talk over you if you want. <laughs> yeah, and I will too. Okay. That's if it, you I'm don't like them, it. I'll talk over Bye. you too, sweetie. Well, fuck <laughs> it. I'm not saying anything. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> now we have to no, beg it's not her. Funny. It's not fucking funny, okay? What do you mean? What's oh, not funny? Man. What's no, not? it's not because what? I don't. No one lets me make a joke, and it's, it's probably a silly joke. But I said, isn't that a Marx Brothers? movie monkey business is it or i'm wrong you're right oh, well, that was it it's a stupid joke and i'm sorry no it's, it's it, not what, what what are you getting so sensitive about we kid I'm each sorry, other on this a, show i had a boyfriend once and he used to do stuff like that to me like you know kid around and i used to say i'm not gracie allen damn it you know but whatever it's okay it's you know, well, we're not your boyfriend. I'm not upset. I, you know, I don't know what to do sometimes because, you know, I, I just said something. And now I'm getting too much time. See, go to somebody else because I don't want to, you know, use it's their because we brought up Chris Christie before and she doesn't like that. Oh, um, I don't care. That, <laughs> fuck, that fat fuck has a lot more now, money than me. That's all I know. I Charlene, wish I had I just, a quarter of his money. <laughs> I'll tell you, though, I just don't know if we should fat shame him. You know? Oh, uh, well, I know, yeah. Well, look at me. I'm fat, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to be on the 800-pound life. So. And I hope that you will lose weight because it would be better for your health, right? But I know, now you're feeling me. But I, feeling, no, no, but I look, I look at Chris Christie and I go, he should lose weight. And then I go, why doesn't he? And the thing is, I he... I that's what I want to know. Well, he had, his, he had his stomach tied and all I that know, stuff. Mm -hmm. Like Al yeah. Roker... Al Roker is like emaciated, kind of still, right? No, and, not, he's still fatty. But fat he's again. the only person that never went down really a lot, you know, mm -hmm. with the stomach stapling or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. whatever, he can do whatever he wants, you know. It's a free yeah. country, right? Yeah. If he wants to be the way he is, that's his business, right? Yeah. So, uh, I went to the doctor the other day, and I stood on this thing, and, and it, like, measured your body fat percentage and stuff. And it says that I'm a half a percent away from obesity. Yeah. Come on. Same here. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I like work out all the time. I mean, if you looked at me, I don't think you would say I'm even close. You to don't even obese. look. I mean, I don't know what you. We only see it from here down I'm, up. I'm, not, yeah. I'm I'm a little overweight looking, but I, not even much. But obese. Yeah, they. I'm like morbidly obese. I'm six four, and they want me like at two, like two o five or something like that. I was two o five in junior high school, I think last. Well, you guys are talking about standards. BMI. They BMI, change those standards right? every few years. You know, if if you're gonna go by what they say, uh, there's not a healthy person in America weight wise. Right. I think the problem is too. I had a high a, real, a high muscle mass for my age, so it gets. I think it screws up the calculation. It has to, because I'm not obese. Well, I lost you know like almost sixty pounds, and I gained about twenty five of them back because of my prostate operations. You know, it, it that causes you to gain weight. So, so that's what happened to me too. My knee operation, I gained like twenty pounds. Yeah, and and, and it has to do with uh, you know. Uh, uh, also, it, it uh, I think I was some other drug I was on as well, and these drugs do put some weight on you. But, also, the sitting around and like recovery and all that. Yeah, yeah. 
When I went in the hospital for my back surgery, I had lost uh, about 40 pounds. Since being out now for a, uh, almost two months, I've put uh, 15, 20 pounds of that back on. By the way, by the way, my friend uh, Teller, Penn and Teller, uh, went into the hospital for an operation, and I, I saw it on his uh, Facebook page. And I didn't know what it was for. It, it appeared that I read somewhere, I went and looked it up. They said that he had his, uh, his back operated on because he had uh, dislocated uh, discs or something like that. Mm -hmm. And that he, from all those things of like, you know, being hung upside down in a straight jacket and so on and so forth all these years. And then I'm watching Penn, he's in New York pushing his book, and he went on and they were saying that he actually, Teller, had a heart operation. So he had his heart hmm. operated on, so, you know. Oh, bummer. And well, that always worries you, because especially when it's somebody you like. You know, Teller's a great guy. Just no, guy. he is. When I've heard him interviewed, when he talks, he's 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 very knowledgeable. Well, you know, he's of one of the things. brightest people I've known. Oh, yeah. he's so yeah. smart, just incredible. And but he he's got... also he's also a very nice, um, uh, considerate person. I think I told the story the other night about the, uh, the this movie we both like called Greed, which was made in 1927 by Eric von Stroheim, and we had a we had a, we were communicating back and forth about it. And all of a sudden, one day in the mail, a book that was published in 1949 shows up, autographed by Teller, saying, I thought you'd enjoy this, and it was the full script of Greed. Oh, wow. The shooting script of Greed, because it was a silent film. And it, it was a film that was like about eight hours long in its original cut, and had been cut down to two and a half hours, and this book was the complete script of the eight-hour movie. Uh, and and I didn't even tell him to do it. You know, he, he didn't even ask. He just did it. He was he's just a nice guy. And it was yeah. a silent movie. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it was like eighty blank pages. No, no, no. Oh. Because you still uh, okay. had to write a script. <laughs> I know. You I know. had to write what the intertitles would be. You had to write yeah. what the action would be, and so on and so forth. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it was just very considerate of him, and I I always liked Teller. And any time I ever sat down and had a conversation with him. Uh, it was a very intelligent conversation, uh, and he was the he's the boss of that act. There's no question about it. I mean, when I've seen them work, Penn stands by, uh, over at the side of the stage, while before the show, while Teller walks around on the stage saying that light needs to be changed, that light needs to be changed, uh, the backdrop should be lowered a little more, you know, doing all of that, and Penn's just sitting there looking at his watch, saying, "When do we go on?" You know, so. I mean, he, he, he's really the brains of that act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, what? What? We're, we're losing oh, yeah. Ray? Well, okay. He, I guess I... Well, was, you're losing me, too. I've got to get ready for the intersection coming mm -hmm. up at the top of the hour. Yeah. Uh, go right ahead, Jack, and we'll see you then. All right? Uh, we have Jeff here, and we have Josh here, and we have Brian here, and... Uh, uh, Alan and Charlene and Ray and in Malaysia with all those cars going by is our old friend Bree uh, calls us from time to time um, <clears throat> Brian how did the birthday party for Adrian go today very well because last night you were making what about 25 yeah, gift, 25 gift, gift baskets. So when they left, I had to drop them off her off in the morning, and then uh, tell the teacher, "Yes, these are for the kids." <clears throat> uh, and then when they left, so she hands them out when they left. So they all they all had their little baggies when they're leaving. So they're all happy. Oh boy! And they, and those were all gifts from Adrian to her class. Yeah, it was like a Play-Doh thingy, and then uh, a pencil, an eraser, and. Uh, uh, stickers mm -hmm. and candy and mm -hmm. a couple of her special friends got little uh little flush uh kind of little little puffy animals out of them yeah little puffy so, animals so, yeah yeah so then we have a really busy weekend and she has dance choreography this weekend also so we're gonna do brunch tomorrow for her birthday and uh, wait a minute her birthday was today I know, but Simon has to. Hey, okay, so Simon has to work tonight, so he's gone, and and then tomorrow, 
There's Simon's working. Uh, Stephanie has choreography. No, sorry, sorry. She has a volunteer work that she's doing tomorrow. So that's at 1.30. I have a dentist appointment tomorrow. And then Sunday, Adrian has choreography all day for jazz or something. So we got the, we have a little, so as you, when you have family, it's too many. You, you know, to you know it's amazing. This is a guy, this is a guy who, how long have you been married now to Tiffany? Yeah, zero. I'm not married. I, I mean, you, no, you didn't get married, excuse me. But, but we've been together for like nine years. Nine yeah. years. So 10 years ago, I had no responsibility. You had no either. responsibilities at all. And now you're a dad making gift baskets for the kids in your kids' <laughs> class on her birthday when they should be giving her gifts. Yeah, my friends make fun of me all the time about it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so. But you seem to be enjoying it. Yeah, because, you know, you have the thing. So I didn't have a good childhood. So when you have children, then you always want to have, you know, give them the things that you didn't have, you know, so. Well, uh -huh. it's, but yeah. sometimes I force some stuff on Simon and Stephanie, so maybe it wasn't that good. But then Adrian is like me, so she wants to be outside she wants to do dance she wants to be active she wants to go to the car stuff, all those type of things so yeah but here's the thing you know uh, uh somebody said to me and and i've never seen, done this because i have never had any kids right or ones that i could raise all right and uh they they said that the thing about having a kid the profound thing is up to a certain point in your life the whole world revolves around you you know and then all of a sudden, one oh, day, yeah. you have a kid, and you, the world doesn't revolve around you any longer. Now the yeah. world re revolves around this kid, and your attention, and everything you do is for this child or children as time goes on, you know? Yeah, in my case, I, I'm really thankful, actually, for COVID, because COVID, coming out of COVID, you know, I busted my ass so long at the company mm -hmm. that coming out of COVID, my, my schedule now is so flexible and I'm almost like a consultant now where I'm just helping everybody out and getting the, these new factories. So I can really have my own schedule and if I wanna stay home or if I wanna leave early, even when I drive two hour or an hour and a half to load, I can leave early to get Adrian or to do something for her. So it's it's been sort of, been really good to have such a flexible people now, oh yeah, you can work from home, even though I still wanna go in the office in Sunnyvale, but you know, I can still, uh, edit my time really well so so well, it, it's been really helpful before covid i could not before covid i was working like 12 hour days seven days a week so. was it what happened when when adrian was born it was now a child of yours what happened well we took uh, tiffany to the hospital <laughs> no i know no but what i'm saying is here, now let's talk about before that no. okay the, the question so no, the nine months before no the, qu yeah. fun. the question <laughs> i was going to ask is before adrian was born there were two other children in the family yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh you, so you weren't their father you're their a paternal father right, right, uh, right but you know you were their stepfather all right so mm -hmm. how did that go i mean did you feel that same responsibility you did once adrian was born or did that yeah, responsibility were, kick know, in i didn't know where yeah i didn't know we we're gonna have adrian so we were, i was still doing stuff with them outside sports and stuff like that yeah you know so good yeah still going to oh speaking of people Oh. Yeah. So yeah, I was still really, really active with them. Oh, there she is. There she is, peeking her head. It's kind of like she's kind of like a living version of Where's Waldo, you know. She wants to say good night really bad tonight. Well, uh, well, just say good night to her. Yeah. Adrian, no, no, come on in, Adrian. Adrian. Come on in, Adrian. Come on. Come on, Adrian. Tell him oh, you're stressed. Oh, now that you say come in, Adrian, she closes the door. <laughs> Adrian, go away. I'm waiting to see the door open again, you know. Yes. Did you get a bedtime story or anything? No. What was that? Does she get Do a bedtime? Do you a bedtime story or anything? Uh, no, she wants me to tuck her in all the time now. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Do you <laughs> spray for the, the boogeyman or, you know, because they say to do that now. <laughs> you yeah, have a little bottle, you can spray water around it. <laughs> no, I didn't know that one. Well, that's a new trick I heard. Yeah. You know My something? son's 30, so I don't have to spray anything. You know? She's There's just boogie. downright hilarious. No, she has, she has a really good sense of humor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we know we should get tested. Uh, now she's 
She just went into the closet. What? She knows you're talking about her. Right what now. she went into? Is there a reason why she went into the closet? Just she. And is this the beginning of a trend? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> so anyway, um, so we have the elections coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, and uh, nobody knows what's going to happen Same here. Huh? Yeah, we've got elections here too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. How's, Currently, there's no government. There's no government? Right, that's correct. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm no expert on this. I mean, we have no government, too, but not for the same reasons. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. Wow. Yeah. I wish I could tell you, but I, I don't know. They just say GE 15, I think, general election. General Something election. Other coming up in November. They called it. They called it two or three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and then they get like a month to to campaign, and then they'll have the election. Well, do you vote? Do you vote in American elections? Yes, I do. Okay. And and what state do you vote in? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Okay. So you get like uh, forms and so on. You fill them out and you vote for who you're going to vote for. That's right. So uh, in yeah. in Pennsylvania, you got uh, Mehmet Oz. And Mehmet Oz up against uh, what's right. his name? Uh, I'm trying to remember his name yeah. now. Guy who had the stroke. Uh, Fetterman. F Fetterman. So how, can I ask you how you're going to vote in that one? Uh, I'm not there because I'm not knowledgeable about it. Oh, okay. I haven't uh, followed it. Well, let's just put it this way. Dr. Oz sold, sold snake oil on TV. Okay, is that all you need to know? You, know. <laughs> you call that nice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Fetterman, supposedly, according to his doctors, he just has, uh, he has, as a result of the stroke, certain auditory problems in which he has to see a question written in order to answer it rather than respond to it hearing it orally. But he says, in every other way, he's completely fine, you know. So, uh, but, you know, uh, Oz, is, Oz is trying not to make it an issue, but he makes it an issue subliminally, okay? Uh, because it would look bad if he gave him a bad time for having a stroke, since obviously Oz was a heart doctor, you know. Right. And imagine going into your heart doctor after having a stroke and having him make jokes about your stroke. It just wouldn't be right, you know. I know. I know you're leaving, Alex. I, I'll hurry up. But you know, everybody was really pissed. A lot of my doctors would say, you know, like when he was a cardiologist, he pissed everybody off when he got a TV show. Mm -hmm. Now he could piss everybody off a lot more because he's a cardiologist running for. A, to be a, trying to be a politician. Now. He's a cardiologist from New Jersey who's running for election as a senator from Pennsylvania. That's the part that really bothers everybody. Didn't he move everybody. and all that for something? You know, so he could do well, it. Well, I think or... he, you know, got an apartment. You know, that, that qualified him. Yeah. So, anyway, listen. So how is it? With a how it is cardiac how is it, surgeon? What? How, a surgeon. how is it? A cardiac surgeon. Right, not just a cardiologist, a surgeon. Yeah, right. right. Hey, but, listen. Uh, you know, you're going to explain to me minute, you know, me... how the uh, Republicans are going to gain in the in the House, and pretty much say the same in the Senate. No, they say in the Senate they that still... the Democrats are going to be about two ahead, and that the the, well, we'll the that see, we, may, but... we may we may lose the House, but who knows? You know. Anyway, listen, we got to go. The... Oh, yeah. yeah, we got to go. Uh, Jeff, thank you for being here. Josh, always a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, there she is, Adrian. Uh huh. And, oh, great pictures, Adrian. She's as I have her art up on the wall here. It gets better and better and better and better. Nice. She's terrific. Yeah. That was mine. How about mine, Uncle Alex? <laughs> <laughs> it's very anyway, good. goodbye, uh, Brian, and goodbye, Adrian. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, and thank you, Alan. And thank you, Charlene. Thank you, Ray. And from Malaysia, Bree. Make sure you call again soon, Bree. We'd love to talk to you. Okay? Bye-bye. Everybody. I will kiss
Uh, yeah, there they are, folks. That's our citizen panel all waving goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye back at them. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Okay, bye-bye. That's our citizen panel. Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the uh, with a little program called The Intersection. He'll be doing his calls on Skype at GabNet Live. I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you on Monday for the pop-up show at 4 o'clock on Facebook. And then right back here on Wednesday, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Okay, have a nice weekend, everybody.